Attention, all visitors at Camarillo Psychiatric. Visiting hours will conclude in 20 minutes. Attention, all visitors at Camarillo Psychiatric. Visiting hours will conclude in 20 minutes. Quentin saw a worried look in Mandy's eyes. He gently turned to her. I can tell something's troubling. What is it? Everyone thinks of me as being your child's nursemaid. I'm afraid people will never accept me in your world. You're the most gracious, wonderful woman in Connecticut. They'll adore you, you'll see. Are you ready, Andrea? Yes. New book? Oh, no. This is my favorite. I've read this a million times. Then it's a classic, I'm sure. You should subscribe. It's the world the way it should be. Men are gentlemen and women are ladies. Won't that be the day? So, who's taking you home? Your mother? No. She doesn't even know I'm leaving. Like you said, this place would have done her more good than it did me. Well, it's because she let go of the only good man she ever had. The only man I ever had was a loser. Speaking of which, this came this morning. My name is McBride, not Hatfield. He's persistent. I'll give him that. Well, it doesn't matter. I'm not going back to him. I've got a new life to start. See how can I help you? Yes, just hold a moment, please. No. Hello. Listen, sir, it sounds to me like you want a nanny for you and not your children, and we don't provide that kind of service. Good day. Some men, honey. Dr. James Lewis. Oh, he's a widow. Needs a living nanny to care for 10-year-old boys and light cleaning and cooking. Surgeon at St. Mary's Hospital. That's what he looks like. He lives on Somerset. It's a beautiful neighborhood. Hi. I'm Rosalie. I'm here to see Doris. She's in her office. Go right in. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Talk about flashback. You remind me of an old friend of mine, Nikki Harcourt. She, she used to be a nanny here. I get that a lot, actually. She went to Paris, right? Lucky girl. <laughs> OK, well, I'm just going. <laughs> Doris? Yes. I am. I know. I'm sorry to bother you. Um, I'm just, I'm not feeling very good today. And I was wondering if maybe I could have the rest of the day off. Can Jackie fill in? Yeah, Jackie can cover for me. All right. Feel better, honey. Thank you. Thanks, Doris. Surgery. So handsome. Oh, 
beautiful. Look at this. Your daddy is on the board of directors at St. Mary's Hospital. That means he's really important. And he's one of the most renowned surgeons in his field. It says so, so right here. Do you know that your daddy went to Harvard and Yale? You want to be like him, you better get all your homework done and study hard. I'm going to be the perfect nanny. Crumbs on your head. Sorry. Hello. Dr. Lewis? Yes, this is he. Um, this is Nikki Harcourt. I, I'm not with an agency, but a friend of mine told me that you were looking for a nanny. Uh, yes, but uh, I've already got five people interviewing later today and tomorrow, so... Uh... Dr. Lewis, I worked for the same family for eight years. I took care of two boys by myself. I cook, I have my own car. All right, all right, all right. Um... Uh, why don't you come by tomorrow, uh, let's say around 11.30? I'd love to. Do me a favor, fax me your resume and salary history. I'd like to review them before we meet. No problem, I'll get them to you right away. All right, bye-bye. Goodbye. Ah! Yes! Here you are. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm Nikki Harcourt. It's nice to meet you, Dr. Lewis. Would you like me to call you James? Well, hello, James. Right? Right. Come in. Um, I'm Fawn. Hi. Uh, wait a minute. I'll get my dad. Okay. Hi. Hi. You must be Ben. I could be Ben. I don't have to be. I could just be a kid who walked off the street, you know? Hmm. I can tell you're a smart one. My IQ is 162. That's very impressive. So, do you know what a C-10-1140 is? It sounds like, um, a plane. <laughs> she guessed it was a plane. <laughs> Congratulations, you're the first. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dr. Lewis, and that's Ben's test. It's actually a model airplane he's especially fond of. Oh. Uh, could you please excuse me? Uh, we could play ball until he gets back. Come on, let's go sit down. I am so glad we're getting Ben another nanny. The last one moved to Chicago, I guess, about a month ago, and I'm leaving to study at Cambridge in England. Oh, that's so exciting. So, you're in college? Yeah, USC. I'm, I'm majoring in English Lit. I love English literature. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh, who's your favorite author? Oh, wow, let's see. I apologize. It's hospital business. Well, um, I have to say your resume is quite good. 
eight years with one family. Why did you leave them? Um, they died in a car crash. Oh, that's awful. Oh, my God. After it happened, I, I went to France, took a break. Well, I certainly understand. Uh, you don't happen to speak French, do you? I didn't stay long enough to pick it up. Uh, the young lady, Beth, who was here just now, uh, is fluent in Spanish and offered to teach Ben. And I, I have to think that that's a big plus, especially living here in Southern California. So please understand, I, I think you're more than qualified. It's just that I'm leaning in that direction in hiring her. I just thought you should know now instead of waiting for a phone call. I'm sorry. Uh, I'll get it. Yeah. <sighs> you didn't even talk to her. As you can see, this isn't easy for either of us. Um, ben and I could learn Spanish together. I appreciate that, but... I don't um... want to learn Spanish. Ben, how many times do I have to tell you not to bounce the ball in the house? It's just a stupid ball, Dad. Come on. Look, that's enough. Just take it outside, okay? Okay. Dr. Lewis, thanks anyway for considering me. And if things don't work out with Beth, um, please do give me a call. I really would like the job. You can count on it. Hi. Um, I'm a friend of Bryce Ellison, your, your neighbor. Mm -hmm. He was supposed to meet me here half an hour ago, and he hasn't shown up yet. And Is there any way I could borrow your phone just to, to call him at work? I came all the way from Pasadena, and it'll only take a second. Okay, sure. Come on in. Thank you. Excuse the mess. I'm moving. Uh, the phone is right over there on the table. Thank you. You're welcome. I thought he was on vacation. He came back early. Hello, can I speak to Bryce Ellison, please? Hi, Bryce. Hi, it's me. I've been waiting here for about half an hour. No, I didn't get a message. Okay, well, I'll just, uh, I'll just wait. Okay. Um, I'll see you then. Bye. He's on his way over. Oh, good. You've got such a cute place. Thank you. Why are you moving? I got a new job. Oh, really? What do you do? I'm a nanny. Do you like it? Huh, it's a paycheck, you know. But my new employer seems really nice. He's a doctor. He's very handsome. But I'm not gonna do this the rest of my life. I can't take these spoiled rich kids forever, you know? Don't worry. You won't have to. I'm sorry, but James really needs me. Shock what happened to Beth. I know. Anyway, 
This is Dad's room. And this is Ben's room, and it's always a mess. It's my room. I'll do what I want. Hi, Nikki. Hey, you. My room, and this is your room. <laughs> Television, you have your own phone. My dad will pay for all your long-distance calls, as long as they're not outrageous. <laughs> it's fantastic. What time does your dad get home from work? I should probably unpack and start cooking dinner. Oh, we never know. Sometimes it's late, and sometimes it's even later. Well, you can't blame him for working hard for you guys. Yeah, true. Well, I've got a lot of studying to do. Um, I'll leave you to get settled in. Okay. I'm, I'm really glad you're here, Nikki. Yes. Feels like home already. Sleep well, my love. Our day. We'll have so much to celebrate. The next morning, as they sat in the gazebo, she asked when he first fell in love with her. He smiled and said, It was when we last celebrated your birthday. We had a picnic at the river. There were swans in the water that day, as I recall. You were admiring them. You looked so beautiful. It was dusk. The water reflected on your face. That moment, I knew I was in love. My James won't let me down. I can't believe Tessenfeld is agreeing to this. Well, it's Conrad. He's convinced two other partners to change their votes, too. Speak of the devil. Doctor? Julia? Conrad? Don't let them get you down. A lot of them haven't made up their minds yet. Yeah. Well, they think they know what they're getting into. You just wait till the HMOs start telling them how to treat their patients. You're tired. Mm. Let's get out of here. Get a bite to eat. No, I can't. I'm speaking to the Board of Review next week, and I haven't finished that damn speech yet. Well, let me help you. We'll go to your place, raid the refrigerator, put on a pot of coffee, and brainstorm. Well, I just hope you're up for a long night. I can handle it. <laughs> hi, come on. Oh, hi. Your father invited me over for dinner. I hope you don't mind. We've got some work to go over tonight. Where's Dr. Lewis? 
Oh, he's parking the car. Hi, I'm Julia. You must be Nikki, the new nanny. You are going to love it here. Excuse me, I have to set the table. Sure. I'm sure she invited herself. Who is she? Is she a friend of the family? No, she's a surgeon at the hospital. You don't seem to like her very much. <laughs> Got that right. This is wonderful, Nikki. You're quite the cook. Thank you. Yeah, I love apple pie. Nikki is spoiling us with all this good cooking. We are one lucky family. Hmm. You know what? I'll have to have you guys over to my place next week for a barbecue. And we can go swimming, too. Cool. Oh, that'd be great. I mean, that is, of course, if Fawn can take some time off from her studying. I hear you're doing very well. Yeah. Look, um, Julie and I have some work to do. Uh, Nikki, could you bring us some coffee in the living room? Of course. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. I'm gonna watch TV. I hear you're doing very well. She doesn't care how I'm doing. She just acts like she does. Why would she act like she's interested if she isn't? It's all a show. She's been after my dad ever since my mom died a year ago. It's sick. Well, do you think that he's interested in her? The more time he spends with her, the more he seems to like her. I'm sure she's determined to marry him. Your analysis is dead on. That's not bad for a stuffy old doctor, huh? Since when are you stuffy? Old, maybe. Old? Oh, oh, <laughs> oh hey, hey, hey. Yes. Yeah. Excuse me. <laughs> Brought your coffee. Thank you, Nikki. Thank you, Nikki. but you're gonna need stitches. Yeah. Now apply pressure. Raise your arm up. I'll get my car keys. Oh, I can take her to the hospital. You stay here and finish your speech. You don't have to do that. It's okay, don't worry, it's no problem. I'll take good care of her. Come on. Okay. Okay, thanks. So how long have you known James? About three or four years. You like him a lot, don't you? He's a very special man. Hello? Oh, Stephen. Hi, how are you, sweetie? Uh, can I call you back in the morning? Oh. Okay, sure. Oh, I'd love to have dinner. Next Wednesday sounds great. Do you want to pick me up around 8? Okay, great. Can't wait to see you. You may want to rethink your position, Julia. You know what happens to people who end up on the wrong side of things. What the hell are you talking about? You're letting your personal feelings interfere with your judgment. Fuck you, Conrad. Anytime. Who is that? That's Dr. Conrad. How are you? All stitched up? Oh, yeah, I'm fine. Great, let's go. There they are. Thanks for everything, Julia. It was my fault. 
my pleasure. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? All right. Good night, Nikki. I am glad you're all right. Nothing a few stitches couldn't cure. Did you finish your speech? Yeah, almost. You must be really tired. Do you want anything? No, no, no. no. I... Just be another half an hour, and then I'm going to hit the sack. You should go and get some rest, too. Good night. Good night. He worked so hard for us. project I'm working on. Yeah? What is it? I'll tell you what, if you do your homework and you uh, eat all of your dinner, I will tell you what's in the bag, okay? All right, deal. Dr. Lewis, I heard you gave a great speech to the review board. Well, I tried my best. Unfortunately for you, Howell and DeCrane have already assured me that I've got their vote. See you tonight at Dr. Trask's retirement party. It's too bad he can't help you. I really don't want to go to this party. Come on, Dr. Trask is your friend. You can't let Conrad spoil a good time. Well, I feel like I've got a knife sticking out of my back every time I hear his voice. This is... Will you? Here, let me do that. Remember that talk we had about a month ago about going up to Big Bear? <clears throat> yes. Well, I went ahead and made reservations for this weekend. Julia, we can't go now. What with everything that's happening at the hospital, I... Why not? It is going to change at the hospital if you're gone for a couple of days. Yes, I know, but... And you've got a nanny now to watch the kids, so they'll be fine. Don't do it, James. Oh, you do present a persuasive argument. Mm -hmm. You need a little more convincing? Don't do it. Just a little. Mm. <laughs> mm. All right, all right, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> It'll yeah. be fun. Come on. Oh, to the party. You look gorgeous. You? I'm done with my homework. Come on in, Ben. There you go. Oh, Nikki! This is way cool. <laughs> hey, fun. See what Nikki got me? Wow. <laughs> to work at Boeing to figure a thing like that out. Hey, listen, kiddo, why don't you go into your room, start putting this together, and I'll be right there. I gotta talk to your sister. Are you gonna help? Yep, two minutes. Two minutes? Two minutes. All right. So, these are your books. Yeah, you can borrow whatever you want. Where'd you get this? Well, I figured I should learn something about the guy I'm working for. Who's Andre McBride? Oh, um, she's a, um... A friend of mine I'd stayed with for a couple of days, I borrowed her library card. <laughs> You're in trouble. This book is way overdue. Oh, bad habit of mine. <laughs> um, listen, Vaughn, I need to talk to you about Julia. After what you said, I'm concerned for your father. Why? What's the matter? Well, I was in the hallway and, um, I saw her in his room and I happened to overhear her trying to convince him into going to Big Bear for the weekend, just the two of them. I can see it now. On Friday they dash off and by Monday they come back a couple. I'm sorry, Vaughn. Vaughn and I are going to be great friends. Are you coming or what? Be right there, Ben. 
That's right, Dolly. You make 50 cents off of every bottle that Cheryl and Tara sell. All right, that's the spirit. Uh, oh, I, I have another call. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Bye. Nature's Kitchen, Rebecca McBride speaking. <laughs> what the hell are you selling now? Troy, are you back in Anchorage? Yeah, I got one more week's work and then I'm done. So, uh, what's going on with Andrea? Well, I, I don't know how to tell you this, Troy, but... Well, she's gone and I don't know where she is. I called that nut house and they said she left some time ago. Well, what the hell were you doing? Listen, they gave her an early release. I don't really care what they gave her. When I'm out of town, you're supposed to keep an eye on her. I give you enough damn money. Now, calm down, Troy. You stupid bitch, now I'm gonna have to go and find her. She'll come back home, she always does. Yeah, and what if she doesn't? She will, trust me. Yeah, right. So she went ahead and made reservations without telling you. How thoughtful of her. Vaughn, we have both been working very, very hard lately, and we just need a break. Long enough so you could sleep together. I can't believe you just said that. I can't believe you do that to Mom. Nikki? Come in. Are you okay, Fun? He is going to Big Bear with that woman for sure. You know, I didn't want to say anything before, but um, last week when we were driving to the hospital, Julia got a call from somebody named Stephen. It sounded like they were lovers, and they made a date for tomorrow night. Why am I not surprised? I knew she was just using him. Did he say where he was going to be taking her? No, but I know he's picking her up at 8 o'clock. Tomorrow night? Mm -hmm. Thanks, Nikki. I'm only glad I can talk to you. I just want this family to be happy. Punctual boyfriend. Hi, honey. It's good to Dad? Mm. Can I talk to you for a sec? Yeah, sure. I think Julia's seeing somebody else. <sighs> what makes you think that? Well, I was out last night and just happened to see her with some other guy. You just happened to see her. It's all right, forget about it. I'm gonna get out of here and over to the hospital. You know, just for the record, 
His name is Stephen. He's an old college friend of Julia's, and whenever he comes to town, she does everything she can to see him. So she is seeing him? Mm, unlikely. He's decidedly gay. You know, it makes me sad that you don't like Julia, but I respect your right to feel that way. Just don't start coming at me with rumors. Okay, um, go on up. I'll, I'll help you hang up your suit. Dad? I, I just want to say I, I'm sorry about Julia. I, I really am. Why don't you go sit down and I'll make you something to eat? I made you your favorite avocado in Monterey Jack. Oh, thank you. Mm. Nikki, um... Yes? I, uh, I haven't really thanked you enough for everything you're doing. I really consider you part of our family. I really feel like a part of your family. Everything's gonna be all right. Thanks. Edna, forget the multivitamins. I mean, they can't do squat against those free radicals. They need something with a lot more kick to it. They need antioxidants. Yeah. And, and think, honey, for your stomach problems, ginger root. <laughs> what did you do that for? I had a sale. What you're going to do now is help me find your daughter. And how am I supposed to do that? That's your problem. But if you don't figure it out, I'm cutting loose, and I'm taking my money with me. The next morning, as they sat in the gazebo, she asked when he first fell in love with her. It was the last time we celebrated your birthday. We had a picnic down by the river. Yeah. The swans were on the water that day, as I recall. It was dusk, water was reflecting on your face. I knew at that moment that I was in love.
shoot my laptop. This was yours, wasn't it? Good evening, Dr. Clarence. How are you and your lovely wife this evening? And you, Dr. Roberts. So nice to see you again. Well, if you'll excuse us, my husband James has promised me the next dance. What are you doing? Who are you talking to? Oh. These dresses are so gorgeous. They belong to my mother. I was just admiring them. The beading is, is, is amazing. Could you please give me my mother's gown? I'm sorry. I'll, I'll put them back. No. I'll do it. Dr. Lewis, some important issues have come up. I'd like to discuss them with you. Oh, and what are they? I won't take up much of your time. Dad, what's wrong? You seem really out of it. Conrad lowered the boom today. Told me if the HMO takes over, I may be asked to leave St. Mary's. Well, he can't do that. Oh, yes, he can. He's in with them very tight. After all the years you spent there, you made that surgery department. Well, I may have to go someplace else and start all over again. Nikki, you promised you'd play me a game. Be right up, Ben. Dad, I need to talk to you about Nikki. What about? I think she wants to be more than just a nanny around here. What makes you say that? Well, you should have seen her face light up when you hugged after Julia's funeral. Oh, come on, Fawn. What, what, do you think she is interested in me? <laughs> yeah. Well, how flattering. Dad, I found her in my room today with one of Mother's evening gowns talking to herself. Look, your mother's gowns are very, very beautiful. Nikki probably doesn't have any clothes like that, so what is the big deal? There's just something weird about her. All nannies are weird. Do you remember Jenny? <laughs> she read all those medical journals and then tried to discuss them with me. I mean, just forget What's about it. What's different? Fun. Now you're going to be leaving in a few weeks. There are a lot more important things to be worried about. All right? Hmm? Okay. So what are we going to do about Conrad? Not much we can do. Just wait and see what happens. It's all gonna work out. Hello? Yes? Hi, this is Lynn from Dr. Bruce Harley's office. I have to messenger some papers over to Dr. Conrad, and I was wondering what time he would be leaving tonight. Around 8. 8 o'clock? Yes. Um, yeah, that's fine. That should give me plenty of time. Thank you very much. Bye. I'm serious. <laughs> I hear London is cold and wet this time of year. Nikki, enjoy your night off, huh? You too. Excuse me. Hi, um, I can't find my car. I was wondering if you could help me out. You should talk to security. They're inside the main lobby. Well, the thing is, I think it may have been stolen, so I was wondering, uh, can I borrow your cell phone to call my husband? Look, lady. I, <laughs> I can't let you hurt James. Uh, uh. It 
was the last time we celebrated your birthday. I knew at that moment that I was in love. Haunted Love. Really? I didn't know that was still playing. Where'd you go see it? At the Broadway Mall. Hmm. That's weird. I drove by there yesterday and they were closed for a renovation. You didn't go to the movies last night, did you? Fawn, that's enough. No, actually, she's right. I, I didn't. I made it all up. So where'd you go? Well, it was supposed to be a surprise, but, um, hold on a second. What are you getting at? Dad, she's playing us all. I don't know where her angle is, but- You are so out of line with this. What's your problem, Juan? around a long time to find something I thought that you would like. It's kind of a going away present. I'm sorry, I didn't have to underwrap it. Are you happy now? You better apologize. Hello? Yes, just a second, please. Dr. Lewis, it's mm. the hospital. Yeah. Hello, Dr. Lewis. What? Oh, my God. Yes, yes, I, I'm on my way now. Dad, what's wrong? Conrad, he... Conrad was found murdered last night in the parking lot at St. Mary's. What happened? Do they know? Well, you know, the police think it was a mugging. His, his wallet was missing. Come on, kiddo. We gotta go to school. Who's Conrad? He was a bad man who got what he deserved. to Mr. and Mrs. Daniel Jones, New Hampshire, blah, 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 blah. Entire family died in a car crash. There are no living references. Must be someone who knows something. You're wasting your time. I already looked at those files. Damn it, Troy. I've been racking my brains. I've been calling everybody I know. What do you want me to do? Let me take out an ad on television. Somebody's got to know where she is. The question is, who? Of course. She'd never stop reading these. And I'll bet you. She gave him a forward and address. Damn, Mama. You're an education. 
<laughs> Hi, my name is Fawn Lewis. I am trying to reach the relatives of Susan or Daniel Jones. Could you please call me back at 818-555-3726? Or you can email me at fawn at lewis.net. Thanks. I love seeing Ben so happy. Well, he adores you, Nikki. Uh, I haven't seen him like this since before his mother died. Well, I wish Fawn liked me as much. Yeah. Fawn's had a tough year with her mother gone. And she's just become a little possessive of Ben and I, that's all. Well, I just hope that she and I can make friends before she goes away to England. <laughs> well, she's as stubborn as her father. But in her little time, she'll come around. Mm -hmm. It's great. James, this is a pleasant surprise. How are you doing? Oh, uh, fine, Tanner. Uh, good to see you. How are you? Terrific, and I don't believe we've met. Forgive me, but this is Nikki Harcourt. She's our nanny. Nikki, this is Dr. Tanner Wallace. He's the uh, chief of staff of St. Mary's. Pleased to meet you, Nikki. Likewise. Listen, James, since the unfortunate death of Conrad, some of the partners are starting to rethink their position on the HMO. I wish it was under better circumstances, but I must say that is good news. I thought you'd like to know. See you Monday. Thank you. Congratulations. Oh. Dad, Nikki, this is so cool. You take a picture of us. Mm. Yeah, sure. OK, hold it right there. Friday. Well, why didn't you say something, huh? Well, I don't know. Birthdays were never really a big deal in my family. <laughs> They're a big deal in ours. That's right, and we are not going to let this one slip by. Now, do you have any plans? You have friends taking you out? Well, most of my friends are back east, except for Marilyn. She's out of town. Uh -huh. And this is from Marilyn. <laughs> so, what are you going to do? Well, I was thinking about taking myself to a nice French restaurant. Oh, no, 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 no. You're not going to sit all alone in a restaurant. I know. That's boring. Let us take you. Oh, no, I couldn't let you make a fuss. No, 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 I insist. I have the perfect place in mind for us to go. Well, I don't know how I could say no. <laughs> I'd love to. Good. Cool. Told we'll you. All right. It's a date. <laughs> Can I talk to you for a minute? I, I'm studying right now. Well, it won't take long. Um, your father and Ben have invited me for my birthday on Friday to dinner. Yeah. Do you want to come? Uh, that night, my friends are throwing me a farewell party. Um, I can't. That's too bad. I know. Um, maybe next year. Good. Little bitch won't be here. Hey, Fawn, I never heard of Daniel Jones. Sorry. Jonathan McDougall. P.S. What do you look like? Great pervert.
Maybe too sexy. He'll love it. Hi, this is Nikki, Ben's nanny. I'm fine, thank you. Um, you know, I don't know about Kenny, but Ben has been dying for a sleepover, and I was thinking that if Ben could stay with you tomorrow night, then we could have Kenny over next Friday. Great. Oh, thank you. That would be great. Dear Miss Lewis, sorry it's taken so long to write back. I've been out of the country for last week. Susan was my sister. She did have a nanny named Nikki Harcourt, and she was wonderful. I hope this helps you, Jason McDougall. <sighs> Great. She was wonderful. After they finished the birthday picnic, Quentin tenderly took Mandy's hand and led her back to Wrightwood Manor. He drew her close and peered deeply into her eyes, so deeply that she almost felt afraid. But the warmth of his touch soon quieted her. You're so beautiful. Kiss me she said, and then he embraced her with a love that was so strong, so pure, that they surrendered completely to one another, and she was happy for the first time in her life. Tomorrow, James, it's the day our dreams all come true. Be ready at two when I pick you up? Yeah. Are you sure it's okay that I go to Kenny's and not your birthday dinner? Absolutely. We can have a much better time. Okay. Save me a piece of cake? Two pieces of cake. No pictures? Family? Passion of Mandy. A desirable young nanny works for a powerful widower. The gentleman falls in love. I knew it. Card. Shoot, I'm out of time. This ought to be nice and chilled by tonight. Matter cat got your tongue. How did you find me? Nice gig you got going here. But I like you better with long hair. You cannot stay here. You've got to go. I don't think so. If you don't leave right now, I'm gonna call the police, okay? <laughs> oh, you won't. <laughs> now go upstairs and pack your stuff. You're coming with me. So why did you disappear, huh? You late for something? I'm supposed to pick Ben up at 2 o'clock. Gee, that's too bad. You don't own me, Troy. Till death do us part. Remember, Andrea? Sounds like I own something to me, like maybe your loyalty. Loyalty? You are talking to me about loyalty? You are not a gentleman. You mean like the kind you read about in those stupid little books of yours? Wake up and smell the coffee, will ya? Pull over, I gotta pee. No, you can wait until we get to a gas station. Th Troy! No, I need to go now. Can you just pull over somewhere where no one can see?
Now don't you run away on me now. I'm not gonna run away. Hey, woman, you done squatting or what? Just a second. There you go. Hello. Oh, there's a fine of $11.25 in this book. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, y you guys usually send me out a late notice, and I, I didn't get one this time. Do you think you can check to see if my uh, address is listed correctly? You're listed at uh, 1973 Fox Hollow Road in Sun Valley. Yeah. Thanks. Sure. Oh, don't worry, Ben. I'm coming. Sorry I'm late. Oh, Are you all right? You look kind of tired. I've been shopping all day. Buckle up. <gasps> Gotta hurry up and get you over to Kenny's. Don't want to be late. What do you mean my car's blocking your driveway? So, where's my son-in-law? No, 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 don't have it towed. Well, get over here. Give me your address. I'll get a cab. I'll be right there. Damn that Troy making me miss my hair appointment. Hi. What can I do you for? I'm looking for Andrea McBride. And what is this regarding? Oh, I'm sorry. My name is Fawn Lewis. Oh. <laughs> I just need to ask her some questions. My father hired a friend of hers as our nanny. Really? And who is that? Nikki Harcourt. Uh, that's a new name on me. <laughs> um, I have a picture of her. Maybe that would help? I think I need my glasses to look at this. Why don't you come on in? Don't mind the mess. I'm a sales rep for Nature's Kitchen. Have you got any accidents? Um, a little. Oh. When you ask a doctor, he'll tell you they are the key to a long and healthy life. Oh, my dad's a doctor. I'll, I'll ask him. You don't say. What kind? A neurosurgeon? A brain doctor, huh? Well, he needs to be mentally alert in his job. Ginkgo biloba is perfect for him. What about your mother? Uh, she died a year ago. Oh, honey, I'm so sorry. No, it's okay. And uh, listen, if you're depressed, 
Mugwort is really I, I'm, I'm sorry. Do you recognize her? Oh. <laughs> sure wish I did, no, but I don't. Do you know where I can find Andrea? All I know is she's staying with some friends for a couple of days. I'm not even sure which ones. Oh, I, I gotta go. My keys. We gotta get out of here. Cab's here. Sorry, I couldn't be more help. Bye bye. bye. Jen? Hi. I I'm gonna be a little late for the party. I, I know. Just tell everyone I'm gonna be there, okay? It's important. Great. Thanks. Like the dress? It's new. Well, I must say you look gorgeous. I um, got your message about Ben being at a overnight. Um, I just wish you would have asked me. I'm really sorry. I, I didn't think he would mind, honestly. He wanted to go so badly. <laughs> well, I guess it's, um, it's just the two of us, huh? <laughs> okay. That's right. been going on here. So where are we going? It's a surprise. Oh, wait a minute. Hello. Hi, Dr. Yes? No, I didn't get your page. Sure, sure. I, I'll be there in ten minutes. It's an emergency at the hospital. One of my patients. I'm, I'm really very sorry, but it could take some time. But I'll tell you what, why don't you change into something a little more casual, and if I'm not back too late, we will order in. I'll be here. I'm sorry. Well, it's just all part of being a doctor's wife. I mean, I'm... Just gonna have to learn to get used to it. Camarillo Psychiatric Hospital. Andrea McBride. Extended stay, 22 weeks. Patient discharged. Oh my God. This is Dr. Lewis. Leave a message. Dad. 
Dad, it's Fawn. Call me back right away on my cell phone as soon as you get this page. Bye. Troy told me last night where he found you. Then today, I get this call, telling me that my car has been abandoned in the middle of town. So I go there, I find the car, I find blood in the car. But no Troy. I swear he never showed up here. Sweetie, you can't kid a kidder. So what did you do with him? I didn't do anything to him. <sighs> mm-hmm. Well, he was no good anyway. <laughs> good riddance. What do you want? Uh, a girl named Fawn visited me today. What? Mm -hmm. What? She asked about Andrea McBride. Oh, my God. What did you tell her, Mama? I didn't tell her anything. <laughs> I don't have to tell anybody anything, do I? Nikki. All right, you're getting at something, Mama. Just spit it out. This is a wonderful house. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's just like one of those mansions you always talked about from your storybook. Oh, please. Yeah, the man that owns this place must be very rich indeed. A doctor, huh? Yes. Oh. I like this house. <laughs> I like what you're doing with your life. He's home already, Mommy. You've got to get out of here. It's now. Okay. Now, it's okay, I'll let myself out of the bathroom. Same way I came in. Just go. Hush, girl. Go take care of business. Hmm? Hello. I didn't expect you so soon. Well, it turns out our problem didn't require surgery. And I am starved. Should we order some food? Actually, I made us something. Boy, I owe you one big time, don't I? <laughs> Everything's ready to cook. All right. Uh, if you'll excuse me, I'll go freshen up. Better looking than old Huckleberry Troy. Looks like you're planning something real nice for him tonight. That is none of your business. Why are you still here? Uh, I just thought I would make sure that my dimwit daughter didn't screw things up for both of us. What do you mean? The herbal market has its limits. And obviously, Troy is not going to be chipping in his usual share. So. I have to count on you. Good cash in my purse, Mom. <laughs> I don't think you understand. I mean, on a regular basis. What? This is your fault. You lost my source of income, and you have to replace it. Get out of here now. No, no. Not until we come to a suitable arrangement. Otherwise, I'm going to have to tell the good doctor what a fraud you are. You won't dare. Oh, wouldn't I? I have nothing to lose. Especially not you, you ungrateful little brat. It took me 10 years to get that weight off. You owe me. Shut up. Just shut up. I don't owe you anything. Fine. Let's just see what the doctor has to say. I hate you. I hate you. You always ruin everything. You are the reason that daddy left. I had to be your slave. Clean up after Mama Andrea. Cook for Mama Andrea. Don't go to school, Andrea, because you don't fit in with the other kids. You know, I have something better for myself right now, Mama, and you are not gonna screw it up. You're getting sick in the head again, Andrea. I bet they put you right back in that nut house, and this time for good. Yeah, that got her attention, didn't it? She ain't as dumb as she looks. <laughs> Multiple vitamins. <laughs> what the hell brand is this? I guess I should put Dr. Prince Charming on my mailing list, huh? <laughs> 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 Burn in hell.
help Mama. Nikki, is everything all right? Yeah, I just dropped something. Oh, what's for dinner? nervous on my birthday. <laughs> well, Nikki, someday you're going to make some lucky guy very happy. <laughs> well, I would like to propose a toast. Mm. Yes. <clears throat> Thank you for being with me on my birthday. Do this. I know you think I'm attractive. Yes, I find you very attractive. <laughs> See, I, I knew it. I knew you liked me. I, I like you as a, a person. <laughs> so, you didn't want to be with me tonight. I wanted to make sure that you weren't alone on your birthday. I'm sorry if I misled you in any yeah, way. Those things I, that you said to me. What things? All the things about how wonderful I am and how you couldn't do it without me. That doesn't mean I want to have a, a romantic relationship with you. Nikki. You don't think I'm good enough? I don't think that at all, no. Do you have any idea what I have had to go through for you? Do you even know what I have done for you? What are you talking about? How could about? you be so selfish? How could you just use me like that and then not give me anything back? I... How dare you? Oh, Nikki, come on, come on. I'm going to get you something to help you calm down. All right? Huh? Hmm? Don't you walk away from me. You were supposed to be out with your little college friends. I had a conversation with your mother today, Andrea. That's funny. So did I. Dad? He's around. In fact, he and I are thinking about taking a trip. Big Bear. Or... Or Mexico. Well, you know what, fun? You're not invited. <laughs> James is a little confused right now. But once I get him alone, he's gonna realize how special his Nikki really is, and then nobody is gonna get between us again. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> 
You're not welcome here. <gasps> It's okay. It's okay. I won't let that happen. See, I realize now how much you mean to me. I mean, deep in my heart, I, I have always known that you're the only one. I, I, I just didn't dare say it. Fawn? Fawn will have to understand. There is no one in the world. wedding will be the talk of all New England. Andrea, it's time for your medication. As I have told you before, my name is Mrs. Lewis. Why must I keep repeating myself? You're right, Mrs. Lewis. I'm so sorry. I would love some tea and butter cookies, please. I'll see what the help can come up with. <laughs> 